Coastal storms are one of the biggest dangers because they can induce flooding and they can induce erosion. A lot of forecasts we do over land, people can pull over in their car if they have a problem. When you're out in the boat, there's nowhere to pull over, so it's very critical for, for the livelihoods of the people going out there. We're trying to find out how vulnerable is Maine to things like storm surge. This is from the Patriots Day storm, and you can see the effects of coastal inundation versus wave battering. The eventual loss of infrastructure and homes comes just right up the beach where 32-foot waves, nearshore waves, were striking homes and actually pulling them out to sea. Our biggest storms are northeasters, and they tend to come in the wintertime. And they produce storm surges, or an elevation of the water, that is usually on top of the tides. So if a big storm surge comes at the time of high tide, we end up having coastal flooding. This is ocean effect. This is what we do operational day-to-day -day forecasting. We're here 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. When the weather is not that bad out, we work on research and outreach. We do research with the Gulf of Maine Research Institute, Niracuse, Maine Sea Grant, University of Maine, and many other partners. Basically, I'm doing coastal hydrodynamic study. We simulate waves in the coastal area and also the coastal current and storm surge. That can provide really valuable information, say, what it's going to look like in this area if, say, we've got a storm. Beach erosion is a big problem here as well. On top of the storm, if we add sea level rise on top of that, how actually the coastal flooding behavior is going to change. And how we can make decisions like I mean, ahead of time to inform people, say, inform local communities, so then people can be actually prepared ahead of time. They're looking back and they're trying to, to uh, do a sensitivity study on what's the biggest contributor to the coastal flooding. Is it the wind speed? Is it the salinity? Is it the currents? So they've done some fantastic work in that department. We are looking at how storm surge propagates into estuaries and how the geometry and other physical characteristics of an estuary affect how the water propagates through it. The goal then with citizen science is bringing in like the social science aspect of that and trying to involve the community. Each citizen scientist has a pressure sensor that collects pressure data. They collect it once a month and they upload it to a website and then we can take that data and process it and convert it to water levels which can show us if there's a storm surge or not when we have a storm event. I enjoyed being challenged. I enjoyed the problem solving. I had to you know, redesign the moorings for the second iteration of the project so that citizen scientists could use them. This whole project of measuring the beaches started uh, in the summer of 1999 and along with Professor Joe Kelly and Dan Belknap at the University of Maine I wrote a proposal with them uh, to Maine Sea Grant. So we've been able to measure uh, the beaches for more than a couple of decades now. And that's important because it gave us a chance to collect the data with the use of citizen scientists or volunteers. It's something we couldn't do on our own. And as a result of that, we've got a long data set and a geographic footprint that covers most of the beaches in Maine. And you're looking at Wells Beach. This is the top of the beach before the storm in this blue line right here going all the way to the water. So you're looking at the topography of the beach as you go down. Immediately after Hurricane Sandy, we had another survey completed. That's this red line here. That's the beach height measured topography of the beach immediately after the storm. So in this case, the entire beach length lost a meter of sand. We have to manage the beaches well to maintain their sand, as we call it, as geologists call it, their sand budget, so that they don't get eroded away and they don't wash away. And at the same time, we would then begin to see a decline in our tourism revenues and, and economic consequences of that. I didn't know what coastal engineering was when I was a sophomore and it definitely opened my eyes up to an entire subdiscipline of civil engineering. I think climate change is the next biggest issue of my generation, of generations of the world right now. There's so many different angles to come in on that and this is just sort of the one I've, I've found that I really thoroughly enjoy. We haven't seen a superstorm yet but we're thinking it's important that people understand what that potential is. We have to have the coincidence of the high tides, the king tides, a five foot surge at high tide, and we have to have the 30 foot waves. But if we want to plan for the worst case scenario, that's what it would be.